Welcome back to another episode of Open RCT2 Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your park using invisible paths. So instead of the normal paths that come in the game, you can use invisible paths and then change the texture beneath it to create much more interesting parks. Here we have some white concrete next to a wooden boardwalk kind of pier situation. You could also use it for things like this really nice tiered staircase I've created here and then a bridge over the roller coaster. Boardwalks are also a really fun one to use the invisible paths with. And then also you could even try something like this giant suspension bridge. So there's just so many ideas out there of what you can do with invisible paths. So let's get started. Now the easiest way to create an invisible path is to use the tile inspector and then you just select the footpath and then you can hit the eyeball button here to make it invisible. But the only problem with that method is the bench that is there disappears. So when it's invisible, you don't see the bench. So what we need to do is open up the object selection and then make sure under the filter that the open RCT2 official is turned on. And then we're going to go to our paths here and then we're going to select the invisible footpath and the invisible queue. And then we're going to go back up and then choose the railing types and we need to select invisible railings. And with that done, we can now use our invisible paths. So here you can see it in the selection. And then the queue line also has a button as well. And if I use the queue line here, you can see that the railings are still gonna populate. So if I change the railings to invisible, those will disappear as well. And you can't even see the path anymore. Now, if we use the path with the wooden railings like this, everything looks fine on the surface. But if I lower the land, we are actually going to see that the railings are populated in there. So we don't want that. So we can change that to invisible railings and then just click here and everything works as it should. We're getting that error message. So that means it's working. But if you have disabled clearance checks turned on, you won't get that error message. And what will happen is you will accidentally build invisible paths underneath it as well. You can't see it, but the guests are stuck there. So if you go to the tile inspector, we can click there and you see that there's actually a footpath that was built beneath the regular footpath. And we don't want that. So this is just a mess, so let's start over. So what I like to do normally is to lower the land beneath all of the path that I wanna make invisible. So that's the first step, is just lowering the land beneath the normal path. And then once that's done, you can go up to the visibility and do see through paths. And now we can open the scenery tab and choose what we want the path to look like. So I'm just gonna do a few examples here, just some base blocks. The wooden path is really nice. That's a fun one for boardwalks. You can do the metal if you wanted to do something more industrial. The glass paths are always fun too, especially if it's a bridge or something like that. And you can also try stuff from some of the expansion packs if you have them. However, I would not recommend using anything from the Wacky Worlds expansion pack because they will glitch and I'll show you that later. But now that we have everything set up, we can use the path, the invisible path now. And we just need to set it to invisible railings. And then now you can just start somewhere where it's flat surface and then just start building right onto the path. That's one way to do it, pretty easy. And then if you have disable clearance checks turned off, the other way is to just manually click on each path and you can do it that way. And if you get that error message, it means disable clearance check is turned off. So you're not creating any double paths underneath. And then for the queue line, I'm gonna do the same thing. So this is all pretty simple. You're just putting the invisible paths in after you have built the scenery. And then with the stairs, there's two different options. Here we have a staircase and then a landing, and then another staircase and a landing. Or alternatively, on the left side, we have the landing and then just all stairs to the bottom. And that will just be a little bit different when we put the scenery in, each side is a little bit different. And now, with all of that done, we can just add a little bit more scenery here but I'm gonna show you if you use any of these up here, the African or the Antarctic, the Eurasian, the Australasian, North American, all of these from the wacky worlds are gonna cause the guests to glitch through them. And I'll show you that here. So you don't really wanna use these surfaces, even though they look nice, they usually cause glitching. So here you can see if I use the uh, Mayan theming here, it's the guests are just gonna kind of disappear in it a little bit. Same thing happens if I use one of the other scenery items from, let's see, the Asian one, we have that, uh, or here's the Australian one. And then you can also see the same glitching is happening, the guests kind of disappear. So these are just examples. I would not recommend using any of the Wacky World scenery. 
but I do like the time twister scenery with the future theming. I'm using the sandstone skyscraper roof. So for the stairs, we can just make a little tiered staircase here. So just a base block for each level. And that looks pretty nice. For the other side though, we aren't gonna be able to do that. So you need a little bit steeper of a stair. So you could just do something like this roof piece if you really wanted. Just gotta disable clearance checks here. And then you could raise it up like that if you wanted and then just need some railings. So just add a little bit of scenery here, just throw the railings in really quickly and do that for the rest of the staircase, something to make it look a little bit nicer. And then with the tile inspector, you can go up here and actually change these railings to right side up and lower them into position. So you can do that for the other side here, left side up, lower them down. So now you have a nice little staircase there. So lots of options. And then I'll just finish this area off with something from the time twister. We have the I don't know if this is the 20s set or something, but they have some nice options there. And then we'll just quickly finish off with the invisible paths. Now the last thing you can do is use the tile inspector here and I can make the banner here invisible just to make it look a little bit nicer. And now if we want to add benches or other path additions, it's not going to let us. So you can delete a bench, but you can't add it back. So what we need to do is turn on height marks on paths and then we can hover over the actual elevation number right here and it will let us place the path item. So the lamp post, you just hover right over the zero feet and click. So that's how you do it. And you can right click on the elevation and it will delete the path. So now if we want to add the path back, it's not going to let us because it's going to try and default down to the surface level. So we just need to turn back on the height marks on paths. And then if you hover over that elevation mark again, then we are able to maneuver our path back into place. Now let's say you built a fence for decoration here and then you're going to place your invisible paths or maybe you accidentally click here on the elevation or whatever and that's going to accidentally break the intersection of the paths. So here you can see in the tile inspector the footpath isn't connected so you actually need to check that box there and then for the other path on the other side you can click here and the footpath right here you can see it's disconnected on the upper left right there so you need to reconnect it. So you can always use the tile inspector to make sure your intersection sections are correct. And the last thing I like to do is make sure the terrain edges match the color of my paths. So here I'm using the Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 terrain edge. It's that sort of beige color and I just think it adds a little bit of detail and makes it look a little bit nicer. But you can see here if I use the ice wall you can see the color difference there. Uh, but there's so many options to choose from if you have Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 connected with your game. The beige is my favorite, but you could use the gray from the medieval wall sets, and that looks really nice with this gray path. But you could always go with the standard Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, the dark gray wooden wall. It's just extra detailing. Now the last thing I want to talk about is when you want to build a staircase like this with little landings and it's a double wide staircase, the best practice is to take a scenery wall and place it between the paths on each of the landings like so. So here you can see when I turn the scenery on you can see those walls there and if I go into my paths I can separate those landings so that guests can't cross. And so now when I go to build the invisible paths, I'm going to make sure that those landings stay separate because you want the guests to just continue up the stairs and not constantly try and walk across the intersections at every single landing. So this is the best practice I find and it keeps the guests flowing up the stairs like they normally would if there weren't landings. So here you can see with the invisible path, it looks pretty nice. And then you go and delete the walls when you're done and so those junctions don't exist. So these are just my best practices for the invisible paths, but there's so much you can do with them. Here's an example of a little station I made with invisible paths and a mixture of the regular paths. And here's also some invisible paths, also with normal paths to create this little river rapid station. But there's just so much you can do. I can't wait to see what things you guys come up with. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe because next time I'm going to show you how to charge $20 for any roller coaster. So stay tuned for more and consider supporting this channel by becoming a Patreon or YouTube member where you will receive early access to all my new videos as well as other benefits. Thanks for watching.